Hi, I'm Adrian Schneer, Advancement Coach and Strategist, Lawyer and Professor, and you're listening to the Advancement Spot Podcast, the podcast all about academic and professional skills, strategy, and mindset to help you make big moves to achieve a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you're looking to accomplish more and take your next steps with supportive and experience-informed strategies, look no further. Let's get started. Hi, and welcome to the Advancement Spot Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Schneer, and I am so grateful that you've taken time out of your busy day to spend some here with me. Today, what I want to talk about is something that so many of our community members say to me when we first start working together, and that is, oh, I'm only going to apply to one school or one program. And so I want to begin by unpacking that a little bit, unpacking why we tend to be committed to only one school or one program. And then I want to talk about why it's a good idea to apply to more than one school and more than one program and the significance behind that. So let's get started. So I think that one of the reasons that so many of us are or feel committed to applying to one school or one program is because we feel initially so much connection to one place, right? Maybe one of our family members went there. Maybe our friends are there. Maybe we genuinely really love that program and what it has to offer. And maybe it's in the city that we want to be in. And the thing is that when we are considering, when I, with my clients, with our community members, when we are considering which schools to apply to, because in many cases, our clients are making those decisions with us, clients and their parents, their families, their siblings, They're all making these decisions. These are really, in many cases, family decisions because, of course, as we know, many of us are taking out loans to be able to afford to do any sort of postgraduate study. But there are other people in our families who are supporting us financially during these processes, during our advancement processes. And so where to apply can become a very political conversation within our homes or within our families or within our support groups. So I think it's really important that we sort of call this out like we do in many situations here, in all situations here. We call out the things that may not be comfortable and we call out the discussions that happen that we need to really dive a little bit deeper into. Now, just off the bat, I think it's really important to mention that, yes, we know that applications cost money, right? Applications cost money. There are filing and application fees for every single school, for every single program. Of course, the portals and the different websites in order to submit your applications are different based on program, based on school, based on province, based on level of education. But it's so important that we start by just having a conversation about money, because in many cases, also what I hear from clients is I'm only going to apply to one because the applications cost money. And that's true. It is true that the applications cost money, certainly not as much as tuition, which makes it more accessible to apply to more, more programs, more schools. Yes, absolutely. Applications cost money. So that conversation has to happen in a bit of a broader context, which is that you don't also want to be paying money or investing in yourself and not giving yourself enough options, not giving yourself enough options in what is in a process where we know there are limited spaces available. And that's why the work that we do here is so important, why you're, well, why we focus on your written materials so, so heavily is because the admissions committee wants to read your written materials. They want to get to know you and who you are They sure may sometimes have to look at numbers, but really the numbers are the hurdle to get your application looked at. And that's not to say that there's a certain number in in all cases that needs to be achieved in order for your application to be considered. In many cases, the applications will be considered regardless of the numbers and your application materials will actually be read because the committees actually do care about who you are. One of the things that is really important to consider 
is the number of schools that you're applying to because you want to give yourself the best shot. You want to give yourself options, right? The best case scenario is that you have more than one school that that accepts you and our clients are being accepted to multiple programs year over year over year at a very high at a very high level at a very high rate and we attribute that to not only the of course the hard work that they're doing and the hard work that we're doing together but also to our non-competition philosophy that informs every single thing that we do here and so it is so important that we focus on you and we focus on the choices that actually make sense for you. And so what that often means is applying to more than one school or more than one program so that you have the choice. You want to give yourself opportunity. You want to put yourself in a stronger position, not a weaker position. And this is all part of the strategy that we work with you on here. So number one is it's important to apply to many different programs, to many different schools. It doesn't mean you need to apply to 30 means maybe you need to apply to six or seven in any given application cycle. And that is often totally doable. And of course, what we also have to consider is the cost-benefit analysis or the value of applying to fewer schools, potentially not getting in, because that's also something that we talk about here. It actually doesn't happen often here, but it is something that we talk about. And what that means is that you're going to have to apply in another year. So would you rather invest more up front, invest in your applications, invest in yourself more up front so that you're not having to wait another year, another cycle in order to apply again? Or would you prefer to apply to fewer schools, fewer programs, and potentially have to wait to get in somewhere else the following year or the year after that? Another reason that you may want to apply to more than one school, more than one program is that it's quite possible that more than one program speaks to you and is in alignment with your goals and your values. And so it is so important that you identify what those goals and values are. But more importantly, it's so important that you identify the kind of life that you want to live. I always say it's not just about the application. It's about your life. Because what we find here when we're working together with our clients in our community, what we find and what we know to be true is that when you're picking your schools, when you're picking your programs, sure, it's about where you're going to spend the next one, two, three, or four plus years. But it's also about the kind of life that you want to live, the kind of professional career that you want, and the kind of choices that you want to be able to make for yourself and the people that you care about. So it's really important that you feel in alignment with the schools that you're applying to. I know, as I said, you know, it doesn't take 30 schools. Some people do apply to 30 plus schools all over the country and internationally, which is absolutely their choice. And we support them in that. It's often not necessary. It's often not necessary because we focus so heavily on your written statements, which actually matter would actually matter. I cannot stress this enough. Being on admissions committees at the graduate and professional school levels year over year, I can tell you that we care. We care about who you are. We care about what you bring to the table. We care about the significance that you attribute to your experiences. And we are not interested in cookie cutter applications. We are not interested in personal statements that could be just anybody's, but you submitted it. We really want to get to know as admissions committee members who you are and why, why you want to be here in this program at this school. And so the schools that you apply to need to actually align with what it is that you want for your life. And this is why we start so much of our work with that question. What do you want? What do you want your life to look like? This is where we start because If you want a certain kind of life or you want to feel a certain way as you develop and as you progress and advance in your life and in your growth, both personally and professionally, then you want to be choosing schools and programs that will help you do that. So the decision about which schools to apply to is very strategic, just like the decision about which jobs to apply to, which if you're applying to law firms for articling or summering or or associateship, then which firms you're applying to 
Similarly, which hospitals you're applying to or which research positions you're applying to, where you are, where you put yourself, who you put yourself around is an incredibly important decision for your life, for who you want to be, for what you want to be, for how you want to feel, for the kind of life you want to live, how you want to provide for yourself, how you want to provide for the people that you care about over time, not just right now. This is why absolutely applications are (laughs) not just about the application, not just about getting in. Believe it or not, it's not just about getting in. Of course, that's what we want and that's what we work towards. But it's not just about the application and it's not just about getting in. It's about your life. And that actually informs, thinking this way actually informs how you represent yourself in your application in order to give you the best shot at getting in, not to one program, but to more than one program. And that is what we do here. Now, on the topic of money, I mentioned this already. And as you know, we talk about the hard things here and we welcome talking about the hard things here because they're not going away, right? So let's deal with them productively, constructively, and strategically so that they work to your benefit, okay? So in many cases, we ourselves may not be funding our own applications. And so there are other constraints. There are other interests. There are other parties i.e. likely parents, maybe partners or spouses who are supporting us in these processes. Now, it's not just necessarily the cost of the application, but it's the cost of the process. For example, maybe you need to take time off work to study for a standardized test, or maybe you need to take time off work to write your applications. Now, what I will say is here... We, when you enroll with us in our signature program, for example, Mastering Academic Applications from Scratch to Submission, or when you work with me one-on-one, something that's so important for you to know is that you don't have to work on your application every single day, all day long. And the reason that you don't have to do that is because I've designed this program in such a way that all of your questions are answered You have confidence and clarity with your steps moving forward. All of your questions are absolutely answered so that you're not wasting time. Because think about what happens when you sit down to work on your applications. You're sitting there, you're staring at a screen, you're staring at requirements for hours and hours. Maybe you're printing them out and maybe you're saving them as PDFs. And you come back to them over and over again. Where did I leave off? What does this even mean? And in Mastering Academic Applications, We demystify, I demystify with you and for you every single requirement, what those words mean, what the nuances are that the admissions committees are looking for so that you're not wasting time, so that you can continue to work in your part-time or full-time job, so that you can continue to go to school full-time or part-time, and so that you can continue to socialize and do those things that you want and sleep and work out and eat properly and take care of yourself so that your health doesn't suffer. That is the goal here, that we are getting you in. You're getting in and on your way there, you're not suffering. You're not wasting time. You're not expending unnecessary mental energy. You are getting your questions answered. You are getting everything that you need in a compact, short period of time and you're not spending months and months and months and months writing, rewriting, rewriting, throwing out, starting again your materials. So as I've said, and on this topic of money, you actually end up saving money in the long term when you invest in the short term. And that's something that sometimes can be hard to comprehend, especially as students when we're so used to, when we're so used to thinking about costs in the future, right? But when we're talking about applications, It's a very real upfront investment. For example, you're investing in the cost of the applications. You're investing in working in our program, Mastering Academic Application, or you're investing in order to be a member in one of our communities in order to support and strategize with you through and to your advancement, which never ends, right? We're continually advancing. The top of one mountain is the bottom of the next, right? And so it's so important that we realize very, very early on that we have to invest in ourselves in order to be able to progress and not just progress. We want to progress faster. We want to progress more productively and more efficiently than if we were doing it alone. Because doing it alone and wasting time 
also costs you money, right? It costs you money. It costs you time. It costs you energy, time that you could be spending with other people rather than sitting alone at your computer, money that you could be making in a full-time or part-time job that you can't do because you're busy with these applications that you don't have answers to and that you don't have clarity around. And away spending mental energy on things that you could just have answered. And so it's so important that we talk about the investment and what that actually means in the long term. Okay. It's not just about what's happening right now. It's about creating the kind of life that you want to lead, that you want to live, that you want to surround yourself with, the how you want to feel in your life. And in order to do that, we have to invest in ourselves. All right. Third, you want to make sure that the programs that you're applying to actually cover what it is that you are interested in and leave some space for curiosity, okay? So for example, if you're applying to a graduate program, master's, a PhD, even if you're applying to law school or medical school, dental school, or any other program, it's so important that you take a look at, for example, the course offerings, the research of the faculty at that school whether faculty members are taking students on as research assistants or as interns. It's so important that you take a look at what the schools are offering and it, because it's not just about applying broadly, right? And you can take that approach, but you may end up somewhere that you realize, oh, this place might not actually be for me. And so many people end up, at least this was my experience as a student, so many people So many of my peers were switching schools all the time. There was so much movement in the in the schools that they were attending, that they started here and then they moved here. And it can be disruptive to our advancement if we're not applying to the right places at the right times. And so what you really want to make sure of is that you feel in alignment with the places that you're applying. And what I mean by that is that you feel some connection or some curiosity or some intellectual stimulation by the places that you are applying. And so you wanna, as I said, be looking at the courses, the course offerings, what your requirements are, and what is available to you in upper years. So for example, you know, typically in, in, you know, many professional programs, even in graduate programs, there are a certain number of required courses. Sometimes it's a full year, sometimes less, sometimes it's more. But it's really important that you figure out whether the course offerings will actually serve you, will actually serve the kind of practice that you want to have, especially those elective courses, okay? Do the schools actually offer what it is that you are looking for? And do the faculty offer any opportunities for you to get involved in the ways that you want to? And the great thing is, is once you get to a school, there are so many ways to get involved that you wouldn't necessarily have known about in the application process. So many opportunities open themselves up once you're there. For example, when I was applying to law school, it was never on my radar that I would be editor-in-chief of the Osgood Health Law Students Association. And so I had a lot of responsibility for the association, of course, in terms of publishing in the Obiter Dicta, which was the student newspaper. That never would have been on my radar, but I had such a great time making so many connections with my peers and writing articles for the Obiter Dicta that I never, that never would have crossed my mind as an applicant. So it's so important that we realize that, you know, those, those opportunities that we may write about in our personal statements or in your applications in some way, and we always find a way to fit them in and in a way that's really strategic, there are so many other opportunities that will come your way that will make themselves available to you, that will present themselves to you once you're there. So the point is to make sure that the course offerings, the electives, the faculty, what the school offers, what the programs offer, actually are in alignment with you and then to apply to more than one program that offers those things. I also have some dear, dear clients who only apply to a certain number of programs because that's what their sibling did. And we all know, and certainly looking back, these clients realize that that's not the way to make these decisions. It's not the way we don't rely on other people's decision making in order to make our own decisions because We're not living their lives and they're not living ours. 
And so it's really important that we are making our own decisions for the kinds of lives that we want in order to be able to plan now and take your next best steps so that you can create, build, and live a life beyond your wildest dreams. And here, that is what we do with you. So thank you so much for stopping by and we will see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Advancement Spot podcast. If you heard something today that helped you get one step closer to achieving the amazing life you want, and you'd like to learn more about working with me, I'd love to hop on a call with you to see how we can help you. So follow me on Instagram at Apply Yourself Global and send me an email at hello at applyyourselfglobal.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode, leave this episode a review, and share this episode with somebody you think needs a boost of inspiration and actionable tools to help them succeed. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.